Welcome to the Daily Horror Habit Podcast. I'm your host, Jay Krieger, bringing you daily reviews of currently streaming horror movies for your twisted pleasure. Be aware that these reviews may include mild spoilers. And as always, I hope you enjoy. Now I need you. Keep that man alive. So you've got him tied to a chair in my kitchen. You're going to take his side. You beat a guy half to death, broke into my house, made me lie to my kid. And you could have called the cops. I need your help. What is this? This is not me. I think we're all entitled to a good scream, a throaty roar to expel some of our collective 2020 anxieties and anger. For the sake of Vicious embodies this expelling of rage in a bloody Halloween siege serving up cathartic chaos. Written and directed by Gabriel Carr and Reese Evanson, the film begins abruptly with Nurse Romina, played by Laura Burke, discovering an unconscious man covered in blood in her kitchen. As she attempts to call the police, a second man appears and tries to subdue her. After a brief scuffle, the attacker reveals himself to be Chris, played by Nick Smith, the father of a past patient of Romina's. We learn that the unconscious body belongs to the man Chris claims is responsible for the rape of his daughter. And what ensues is a brisk 80 minutes of torture, terror, and truly excessive bloodshed. The film is evenly split into two distinct halves. The first 40 minutes are dedicated to the dynamic between Romina and Chris, Romina becoming an unwilling participant to Chris's kidnapping this man. Chris uses all manner of impromptu torture techniques to extract the truth from his hostage, Alan, played by Colin Paradine. His torture techniques boil down to him taking a hammer to Alan's knees and face. But this isn't as clear cut as it may seem. Chris continues to champion that Alan is guilty, despite a court clearing him of any wrongdoing. Each piece of potential evidence Chris introduces is dismissed with a rational explanation, which begins to make Romina question which man is worth believing. This interrogation is fueled by the trio's performances that more or less get the job done in establishing the parameters of the film. It does begin to feel a tad long-winded with its moments drawn out in several retreading of already established narrative developments. And the performances themselves facilitate the narrative decently enough, establishing clear character motivations and the like. Though as the narrative begins to feel drawn out, their performances struggle under that weight. And just as the first half of the film begins to outstay its welcome, the main course of Carnage is served. And now for a brief intermission. If you've been enjoying this episode of Daily Horror Habit, please take a moment to subscribe to the show on your preferred streaming platform or leaving a review on iTunes. And thank you for your continued support, which drives the show's success. And now, without further ado, let's get back to today's horrifying episode. What ensues is an unflinching 40-minute siege of Romina's home from a gang of Halloween-masked killers who were there for one thing and one thing only, to kill everyone in the house. Which, coincidentally, allows Chris, the grieving father, the catharsis he so desperately needs. For the sake of Vicious approaches violence with the gratuitous pulpiness that'd be right at home during a grungy midnight showing slasher. Characters suffer excessive stab wounds and hemorrhage gallons of blood. Those repelling the mass killers must employ household items as tools of war, as it's a close quarters bloody brawl for survival. Eyes are gouged out with hammers, Halloween lights are used as garrote wire, and glass shards are used to flay pounds of flesh. If it isn't nailed down, it'll be used as a weapon of war. The film serves as a full frontal assault on decency and scratches, rather punctures, that slasher horror itch nicely. While the film's violence is certainly memorable, it's occasionally undercut by close-up camera work that can momentarily skewer the viewer's perception of what is happening. More often than not, though, the directors allow the violence to shine and truly deliver on the film's gratuitous bloody premise. A fantastic score from artist Foxgrinder complements this Halloween night home invasion that adds a sense of sleek style to the gruesome violence. A synth-heavy bass is evocative of the character's uncertainty about what is coming through the door next. In more ways than one, For the Sake of Vicious reminded me of the 2012 video game Hotline Miami, as it pairs an adrenaline-pumping soundtrack with a fast and furious sense of violence. This marriage of style and violence makes for a satisfying bit of late-night pulp. For as much as I enjoyed the film's second half, keeping your expectations for its narrative in check is a must. 
While for the sake of Vicious's plot serves its purpose well enough, it feels as if it could have been refined or even slightly condensed. That being said, I found its pursuit in championing excessiveness to alleviate most of my grievances. The film's exploitation violence within a claustrophobic environment is a breeding ground for chaos, making for a memorable piece of bare-knuckle brawling home invasion horror. The film unfortunately doesn't currently have distribution, but its violence makes such a memorable splash that this is hopefully bound to change in 2021. So keep your eyes peeled for news on the film. And that'll do it for another episode of Daily Horror Habit. I'll see you guys next week for another week's worth of Daily Horror movie reviews. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe to Daily Horror Habit on your preferred streaming service and follow at Daily Horror Habit on Instagram and at Daily Horror Pod on Twitter.